Today we're going to look at an interesting circuitous path to proving the Pythagorean theorem. And that'll be by proving these versions of the Pythagorean theorem that are built out of 60 and 120 degree triangles. And so to get everything started, let's look at the area of an equilateral triangle. We'll need this for our proof of the so-called 60 degree Pythagorean theorem. So let's just say that this has side length s. Now the standard way to find the area of this would be to put an altitude and then use the regular Pythagorean theorem to find the height of this equilateral triangle. But we're not assuming the regular Pythagorean theorem. So we would have to use Heron's formula in order to find the area of this equilateral triangle. So using Heron's theorem might seem like it might, in the weeds, require the Pythagorean theorem. But in fact, the proof of Heron's theorem does not require the Pythagorean theorem. So we're actually okay here. And I'm not going to recall Heron's theorem. I'll let you look that up if you want to. So I'll just point out here that the area of this equilateral triangle with side length s is going to be equal to the square root of 3 over 4 times s squared. Okay, nice. But now from this, it's pretty easy to calculate the height of this triangle, given the fact that we also know that the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. In fact, we can drop an altitude here, and we'll see that that makes this line segment here s over 2. And then this would be the height. And so if you set up an equation, one half base, the base is s, and the height is h, equals this root 3 over 4 times s squared, you'll see that this height here is root 3 over 2 times s. And so we have kind of derived the Pythagorean theorem for this sub right triangle here by way of Heron's theorem. Okay, so now to look at the so-called Pythagorean theorem for 60-degree triangles. So here's what I mean by a 60-degree triangle. I have one angle which is 60 degrees, and the other angles are whatever we want them to be. So I've called my side lengths A, B, and then the side opposite the 60-degree angle is C. Now to get started here, I'm going to find the area of this triangle. But in order to find the area of this triangle, I'm going to drop an altitude. So if I drop an altitude down here, let's observe by this picture up here, since this left-hand portion is half of an equilateral triangle, we know that this distance right here is b over 2. And then this distance right here is the square root of 3 over 2 times b. So that tells us immediately that the area of this triangle is going to be, well, 1 half base times height. So that's going to be root 3 over 4 times a times b. Because notice my base is a and my height is this root 3 over 2 times b. Now that's not this 60 degree Pythagorean theorem. That's what we're going to prove with this diagram over here on the right of the chalkboard. So what I've done is I've copied, as I've copied this 60 degree triangle three times and I've put it in like a cycle here by connecting some vertices. And just so that we see exactly what's going on here, let's observe that this is our 60 degree angle for each of these. So that means that these side lengths here on the equilateral triangle that's been created in the middle are all C. Furthermore, just by our diagram over here, notice that our longer side length, which is not the C, is A and the shorter one is B. So that means we have this is A, this is B, this is A, this is B, this is A, and then this is B as well. Okay, so now what we're going to do is calculate the area of this big triangle two different ways. So we're going to do it as a A plus B sided equilateral triangle, and as a combination of 
three 60 degree triangles and a C-sided equilateral triangle. So in fact, we're just dissecting this big equilateral triangle. Okay, so let's see, as an A plus B-sided equilateral triangle by our formula over here, we see that the area is gonna be equal to the square root of three over four times A plus B squared. But now multiplying that out, we see that that is the square root of three over four and then A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. Okay, nice. But then this other method, we'll have to add this number to itself three times and then use this formula on the inner triangle. So let's see, that's gonna give us three times the square root of three over four times A times B. So that's three of my 60 degree triangles and then plus the square root of three over four times c squared. So that's my inner c-sided equilateral triangle. Okay, so now we can just set these two areas equal to each other and see if we can get something that looks like what we might call this 60 degree Pythagorean theorem. So I'm just gonna maybe set these areas equal to each other and then get rid of the square root of three over four, which is pervasive throughout. And let's observe that we will immediately have a squared plus 2ab plus b squared equals 3ab plus c squared. But now moving some things around, we'll have our 60 degree Pythagorean theorem, which I'll just write over here as a squared plus b squared minus a times b equals c squared. Okay, so now that we've got our 60 degree Pythagorean theorem, let's use this to build a 120 degree Pythagorean theorem. So now for our 120 degree Pythagorean theorem. So we've got some triangle that has a 120 degree angle, and then the other two angles are kind of free to be anything that is possible. We've got side lengths A and B, and then C, which is opposite the 120 degree angle. Okay, so the trick here is to complete this triangle a bit. So let's extend this base over here to the left, B units. So I'll just say that this is B units and then complete this into an equilateral triangle over here on the left of our picture. But notice that that makes this 60 degrees, this is 60 degrees, and then this is also 60 degrees. So that means we can apply our 60 degree Pythagorean theorem to this larger triangle. And let's observe that that immediately gives us the following formula. So we'll have A plus B squared, and then it's gonna be plus B squared minus A plus B times B. So that's this minus A times B term. Remember that our base here is gonna be A plus B in this case equals c squared. Okay, so let's see what that's gonna leave us with in the end. So we're gonna have a squared plus 2ab plus b squared plus b squared minus ab minus b squared equals c squared. So now putting this all together, we'll see that this is a squared plus b squared and then plus ab equals c squared. And there we have what we might call the 120 degree Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so now let's see how we can put these two together to prove the standard Pythagorean theorem. Now we're ready to use this 60 and 120 degree Pythagorean theorem in order to prove the normal Pythagorean theorem. And in fact, we're only really gonna use the 120 degree Pythagorean theorem, but notice that we use the 60 degree theorem to prove the 120 degree theorem. So it's all kind of underneath there. So I've got my right triangle set up with side length AB and hypotenuse C. And the first step will be to connect this vertex up here down to the base so that the resulting line segment makes a 60 degree angle with the base. So let's see if I can do that. I think this is about a 60 degree angle, so that's pretty good. And now what we can do is use this relationship between the height of an equilateral triangle 
and the hypotenuse of an equilateral triangle, as well as the base of an equilateral triangle, to get these measurements right here. So the measurement of this line segment created at the base, and then this line segment created, which is the side length of this half equilateral triangle, if you will. And what you'll see just essentially by using this formula over here is that this will be two over the square root of three times B. And then this is gonna be one over the square root of three times B. So that's just from a pretty straightforward calculation. But now observe that that's gonna leave this remainder of this line segment as a minus one over the square root of three times B. Okay, nice. But now let's also observe that we have created a 120 degree angle triangle by you know, making that new line segment so that it creates this 60 degree angle, this 60 degree angle that I said verbally, but now I've written down. Okay, so now we'll apply this 120 degree Pythagorean theorem to this new 120 degree triangle. So let's see, that's gonna give us something like this. We'll have A minus B over root three squared plus two over root three times B squared. So that's like my quote unquote A squared plus B squared term. And now I need my plus AB term. So that's gonna be plus A minus b over root three times two over root three b equals c squared. Notice that my hypotenuse just stays really nice here. I guess it's not my hypotenuse in the 120 degree triangle, but what is the hypotenuse of the right triangle? Okay, so now let's simplify this left-hand side. So let's observe that this is gonna give us a squared minus two times a times b times the square root of three and then plus b squared over three. So that's what we get from multiplying out this first term. And then from squaring that second term, we'll get four over three b squared. And then from multiplying out that next bit, we'll have minus, or sorry, that's plus two times a times b over the square root of three and then minus two over three times b squared. And then I'll just bring down the right-hand side of the equation, which is uh, c squared. Just to point out where all of this comes from, we've got that is going into that term, and then this is just simply the square of what is right above it. But now we can do some simplification. So notice that we've got a two ab over root three and it's negative, so those can cancel each other. And then after that, and then we've got a b squared over three, a four b squared over three, and a negative two b squared over three. So pushing all of those together simply gives us b squared. So that's gonna simplify this entire left-hand side down to a squared plus b squared. And then just bringing down the right-hand side, we've got a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which is of course the standard Pythagorean theorem.